Hello, welcome to Sportworks Kingdom Moments. I'm glad you could join us today on a Friday that, that has been hot as could be. Our our football team, I know they get to be with them today, but they got to start day one of camp and excited for them and all of that. Um, you know, first few days of camp have to be limited equipment to start with, so they're not really into how they're going to have to work things extremely. So, I, But be praying for them, be praying for all of our equipment staff and our trainers and there, there's just a lot of extra things everybody's having to do they're in unchared uncharted territory and, and so we're, we're praying that god just have his hand on them and and we'll have all kind of other students starting to flood back here but meanwhile we we are in james chapter one we're going to look at verses 13 to 18 uh, and one of the things kind of comes up in that is is as these guys got to take the field today uh, they, they are all trying to figure out where they fit within this program. There, there's a, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of posturing. You know, you come in, you're the new guy. There's a lot of new guys out there. Uh, and then everybody with, with some new coaching changes, without having had spring, everybody's kind of fighting for, for spots. And, and you want to find out where, where you fit. And, and really the opportunity sits in your hand. You, you can try to say, well, I didn't get this, I didn't get, but, but the opportunities all rest in, in your hand, day by day, choice by choice, as to what you do with that. And in some ways, James is giving a, list, a little bit of that because there are those who are going to want to try to blame God for this or blame somebody else for this or so on. And, and the reality is see, we've already covered, he talked about considering trials and those tests joy that it, that Man, those things give us opportunity to show who we are. They give opportunity to show who our God is and, and our faith. And are we steadfast in our faith? Or is it something that just depends on the, the wind and the waves and, and how I feel on any given day? Is, is it a part and a drive of who I am? Everybody shows up on Sunday, right? And except till COVID. But it used to be we'd all show up on Sunday and and suddenly, no matter what went on at home to get everybody ready in the church, everybody got out of the car and, and stepped onto magic asphalt. And when asked how everybody was, everybody was good. Oh, we're doing good. Good to see you. And I think it's part where our kids begin to grow up watching and wondering, what is this whole thing about? Mom and dad are liars. <laughs> like, like We've just been fighting. There was nothing good about anything on our way over here. Um, but then suddenly for an hour, hour and a half, we act like it's all good. And then we get back in the car and boom, here, here it comes again. And so is it a part of how I live my life? Do I see myself as an alien and a stranger here that this isn't home? And I have my mind set on a new citizenship that Jesus has given me. And it's eternal. And it's with him forever. And so the treasure I store up there will have a lasting eternity about it. They will have a different quality. It'll be an issue of following different patterns than the rest of the world around me follows because they see this as their home. If I don't see it as my home, I will treat others differently. I will treat how I hold on and cling to things differently. I will value things differently. And, and so temptation I will treat differently. All of us are fallen sinful people. So we have a sin desire that wants what it wants. We talk about the pride of life, uh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of our eyes. And, and, and we'll kind of continue to battle those things here even after Jesus grabs us. He gives us a new heart. Our mind, he tells us, gets transformed. But, but part of this we have to just die to. We have to begin to love and long for the things of God more than the things of this world. And that's some of what James jumped on us right out of the shoot with and he's going to hit us a little bit more with so let's jump in again on our esv bible verse 13 says this let no one say when he is tempted are we going to be tempted yeah everybody's going to be tempted jesus was tempted and i i've had some suddenly push back on that with him some, somewhere they were taught that he was they want to use the word tested well what is temptation? I mean, sin is not the temptation. Was, was Jesus kind of literally, did he ever give it a, a lot of thought? I, I don't know that he did. Uh, he responded quickly, but that doesn't mean he wasn't tempted. We got other verses that say that he was tempted in every way as we are. So uh, deal with the translation however you want. But are we all as sinful men and women tempted? Yes, we are. Many times throughout the day. 
are we in sin at the point that we're tempted? Well, no, no, we're not. It's a question of where, where does it go from there? And how quickly have we reprogrammed our thinking that when it comes, we quickly have a verse and understanding and a reason why we, why we move on with a truth that, that shuts it down? Or do you allow it to sit there and, and to grow and to kind of fester? And that's, that's what James is going to point out to us here as to what happens to us. Again, verse 13, no, let no one say when he's tempted, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Now, we already have that built in the cake, right? We, we have those desires. We, we are broken, sinful people who our, our flesh wants what it wants. Our, our eyes look at things and, and long for and, and lust after things. And then our pride steps in. So, so that is there in and of itself. It says, but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then, in verse 15, then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So we start with a temptation. And the reality is our desires are already looking for those things. Like they don't. Satan doesn't have to come get involved. The world itself presents us enough things that our sinful brokenness desires and longs for. And, and when we continue to focus on those things rather than truth, then, then it is conceived and bursts itself into sin. And ultimately the penalty of sin is death. And, and so that, that's, that was the state we lived in prior to Jesus. There was no hope. Jesus gives us hope. He changes us. He makes us a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. But the reality is those things still have to be put to death. Those things and patterns don't just magically go away. God has given us his word. He's given us his spirit to dwell in us. And he's given us fellowship. I mean, we, we should be an encouragement to one another. We, we should want to get better. Our, our desire and longing, we should begin to hate sin the way that God does. It, it should break our heart that, that we sin against the very God who had his son die for that and to set us free from that. We're not bound to that anymore. But we do have opportunity to, to have victory in that. So do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. And in other words, God, God is where all the good gifts come from. That's all he gives us. And that's never changing. Like it's not, well, one day he gives me this, and the next day, yeah, and then the next day, oh, and that, it, it doesn't change. God gives good gifts to us. And, and, and we need to just rest in it and want the things that he gives us and, and to fuel ourselves with the things that he gives us. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his cre creatures. And the reality is for, for especially them in the early church, they, they were just that. They were the first fruits of, of what Jesus had done on our behalf. They, they were the first generations to begin to live this new life, redeemed, uh, made new by Jesus for all the world to see. In fact, they got the title Christian just because of that. That as people looked at them, they said, you, you look like little Christ. They didn't mean that as a positive you know, think that that was simply, hey, the reality is these folks looked and act like what I knew of Jesus. I, I hope that becomes true of us. I hope that as folks look, we, we don't get to be really that first fruits anymore, but, but we, are, we are the long, you know, thousands of years of, of the reality of God's faithfulness, the reality that God still saves and redeems, the reality that God still makes us new. We, we, we are still that. Not the first fruits, but we're still fruit bearing from the same vine. John 15, that Jesus is the vine, we are the branches, and our need to abide in him. And as we abide in him, God literally changes things in us that we need to find our, ourselves that that's home. I rest in the vine. I rest in Jesus and Jesus alone. Can we begin to live that way? Can we begin to want to please Jesus first, foremost, and always, above all else. I, I know we can, um, but, but we've got to fight in this together. We've got to encourage one another. I know that, that through this COVID, church is not meeting. 
there are way too many have gotten quite comfortable that hey I can check I can turn your video on I can watch my stream in live church in live stream and I can watch heck I can watch all kind of services I can now with technology I can watch my favorite preacher from 30 years ago still preach met we were meant to be in fellowship together we, we were meant to come together and worship God together I implore you to find some place so that you can, I don't know, some places you got to reserve your seat so that they got you set so where you've got distancing. Some still not meeting yet. Some are meeting outside. Find one that's meeting outside. You can go sit in your car and turn around. At least you're there together and you're somewhat singing together. I'm not saying let's buck the whole system, but we have to get back to worshiping together. And, 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 and James certainly... These folks are dispersed and they're still to get together. If you knew the time, energy, and effort that folks in countries where they're not allowed to meet travel and work and, and get to a place where they can be with other believers to be taught God's word and to sing and pray together, it, it puts us to, to shame. The, the, the extent of which they go to want to be, they know they need one another. And they need us praying for them too. They need to know but. But are we that committed to needing one another to challenge each other to make sure that we grow and to make sure we lift our voices in unity and praising our God? I pray that would be true. Question is, which, which, which is true of you? Do you follow your desires or do you follow Jesus? Any given day that we would evaluate after, who, who and what have I followed today? Who and what values drove my decisions today? Do I feel bad about the day based on what set of values? Do I feel good today based on what set of values? Is it about glorifying God? Is it about loving Jesus and following him? Or is it about, hey, I made some people happy. I got a raise. I made more money. I did this. I did. Well, which is it? That, what desires drive you? And are they changing to become more and more the desires of God? And James is after us on that. And he'll kind of keep on and excited to move on but heavenly father we thank you and love you i pray that you would grab our hearts that we would know certainly that we can't ever reflect our failures on on you you've given us all we need to be able to shut those desires down to follow truth and, and to be obedient uh, and that you do give us good gifts and i pray that we would have hearts that rejoice in all that you've done on our behalf and, and that we would have a heart that begins and longs to want to follow you obediently we do thank you that when we fail, that when we give in to those desires, there's room through your grace to confess our sins, that we're forgiven of them and all our transgressions because you paid for sin once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, that we live in that truth, not our guilt and shame. You've set us free of all that. I pray that we begin to live life knowing that others are looking at us as the fruit of, of, of the vine that we need to abide in you and then we need to draw others in to abide in that same vine. We pray all this and look forward to encouraging one another. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all so much. You all have a great weekend and we'll be talking to you tomorrow. Thanks.